I remember uh, realizing that uh, uh, we were onto something when someone told us uh, it's actually easier to uh, uh, to buy an expensive car than to rent an apartment, and that got us thinking about the role that automobiles play in our thinking about uh, the carceral system, and we decided to devote ourselves to this project. When I first came home, like I knew that I would eventually get a car. But because I knew all the responsibility that came with a car, as far as paying insurance, as far as staying on top of your, having your oil changed and, you know, just regular maintenance of the car. Like, I wanted to make sure that I was at least um, financially fit to have a vehicle. Because you get parking tickets, you know, you have to pay tolls, you know, it's a lot that comes with it. It's not just get in a car, get a car and go. We began our whole um, PEP debt research lab doing a series of interviews asking people about their the totality of the debts in their household and how um, the debt that they accrued through the prison system and the court system, you know, what other kinds of debts that coexisted with um, in their home. And the car just kept coming up over and over again. My father, he had me with him a lot and he was always moving throughout the neighborhood doing different things as well as the trips that we used to take as a family so i just always saw that a car can get you places on the on the one hand there is this sort of endless promotion of uh, of uh, uh, the, these devices um, to to generate freedoms freedom of movement uh, freedom of access uh, freedom of the imagination um, and, and the reality, on the other hand, of how the, the, the device is a trap. It's a very tightly sprung debt trap on the one hand, and it is also uh, uh, a, a trap in the sense in which it leads to the capture, and physical capture of individuals, and puts them on the road to detention.